something like having one word sum up the entire day on the campaign trail. For John McCain, the word was meltdown. Yes, the vernacular kind, but the literal kind, too. Our third story tonight, John McCain goes nuclear at the famed biker festival in Sturgis, South Dakota. Senator McCain launched an attack about energy independence, at least originally, and then kind of got lost in some of the more complicated sentences. Is there anybody is that's tired of paying four dollars a, a a bucks four dollars a gallon for gasoline? Is there anybody is sick and tired of it? Is there anybody that wants to become energy independent? Well, I'm telling you right now, we're sending seven hundred billion dollars over a year, and your Congress just went on vacation for five weeks. Tell them to come back and get to work. Tell them to get to work. When I'm president of the United States, I'm not going to let them go on vacation. They're going to, they're going to become energy independent, and we're not going to pay four dollars a gallon for gas because we're going to drill offshore, and we're going to drill now, and we're going to drill here, and we're going to drill now. My opponent doesn't want to drill. He doesn't want nuclear power. He wants you to inflate your tires. My friends, we need a commander in chief. We need a commander in chief who'll end the war in Iraq, but we'll win it the right way, and that's by winning it. You let me know when you come up with that wrong way of winning a war by winning it. And while we explained to the senator last night how the Bush administration and NASCAR both insist tire inflation really does save huge quantities of gas, Senator Obama responded to McCain on his own today. It's like it's like these guys take pride in being ignorant. You know, I mean, and they're, 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 they think it's funny that they're making fun of something that is actually true. They need to do their homework because this is serious business. Instead of running ads about Paris Hilton and Britney Spears, they should go talk to some energy experts and actually make a difference. McCain, meanwhile, highlighted part of his energy plan, subsidies for more nuclear plants. Touring a nuclear plant today, the first presidential candidate in recent memory to do so, most apparently considering them politically radioactive. And McCain's showpiece for safe nuclear energy, the Enrico Fermi 2 plant, half an hour from Detroit, half an hour from Ann Arbor, half an hour from Toledo, where a nuclear regulatory commission alert occurred in 2005 after a leak forced the plant shutdown and cancellation of nearby after-school activities. Activities. This following 2001's, quote, catastrophic bearing failure of the emergency diesel generator there and the 1999 security violation at Fermi where someone got a loaded handgun inside. So why not tour Enrico Fermi Plant 1? Well, he shut that down in 1972 and enough liquid sodium still remains that just this May it started a fire there, which the NRC had to check for radioactivity. That, and of course Enrico Fermi 1, is best known for its actual partial meltdown from 1966, chronicled in a bestseller called, We Almost Lost Detroit. With that happy memory, let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also, of course, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. Let's start with McCain's choice of photo op uh, spaces today. If your advance man really has to bring sort of a Geiger counter with him, is that, is that telling you that this might not be as good an idea as it seemed on paper? No, it's a great idea if you're John McCain. You can take those rads. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, 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 know you, you take a little uh, 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 radiation for the cause. I mean, this is all a culture war, Keith. This, this is not about energy policy. This is about cultural symbols. And what John McCain is saying, whether it's in Sturgis, where he's telling all those bikers to drill, and who knows what they took that to mean, mm. or, or, or running around in a nuclear plant, John McCain is saying, I'm a guy, I'm a soldier, this is war, I'm not afraid of danger, this is what I want to do. That, that's what this photo op is all about. But each time, it seems like each one of these photo ops comes with enough of a problem that, that a thousand people who might be sitting on the fence somewhere go, hey, wait a minute. Um, and this one would be McCain wants 45 more nuclear plants, yeah. but he's against nuclear waste being trucked through his state, even though everything's perfectly safe. And the Navy just last week announced this leak on the nuclear sub. Is this not another one of these things where, you know, running on a nuclear plant in every backyard might have a downside, even if you're winning the cultural war or perceive you well, are? 
Well, it might, uh, although the polling is pretty close on this, Keith. Uh, because of $4 a gallon gasoline, that's freaked a lot of American people out. They realize that the future of transportation is electricity, not petroleum, and they're smart enough to understand that electricity probably means new, more nuclear plow, power. The Washington Post reported the other day that Virginia wants to build another, Virginia uh, electric companies want to build another nuclear power plant. And the Post took note of the fact that there was surprising little, little opposition to it. And Virginia is a swing state. In some swing states, like Virginia, Indiana, Montana, to name three, I think aggressive energy production measures are probably popular. In a state like New Hampshire, which has a coastline to protect, it's a closer question. So the McCain people have looked at the polling here. They're making a bet. Uh, listen, they've got to go with what they've got, and this is what they're trying to do, both on the numbers and the energy uh, numbers and, and the culture war. Uh, Sturgis, we're going to talk later about the other uh, highlights from right. the biker rally, the even stranger stuff about the misses and the biker beauty right. contest. But what did you see in that clip that we just played? Was it an <laughs> off day? Was it a tired candidate caught up at a strange kind of event or uh, whatever it yeah. was? Does this pose a political problem? What, what I saw, Keith, quite honestly, is I was a reporter who's saying, God, I wish I was at that event. Because <laughs> uh, that was McCain, unbuttoned, unhinged. Uh, unplugged, call it what you will, you know, he was talking to the heart of the heart of his constituency. And what you got to imagine here is, do the cultural switch. Imagine John McCain at a poetry slam at the 92nd Street Y. Okay. You know, would he, would he fit there? Imagine Barack Obama at this crowd. Would he fit there? Uh, and I think all presidential candidates need to be able to speak to the whole country that was McCain and his element. He can't win with just those people, but, you know, that's his peeps. That's the best he can do. Yeah, but the only problem is when you take that tape out of the context of where it was, where it was used, you use the nine, first nine seconds, and it's the best ad Obama could have running now because he doesn't sound like he's making any sense whatsoever. Except, except for the Paris Hilton ad, which was hot. Well, yeah. Um, Howard Feynman of Newsweek and MSNBC, our resident Paris Hilton political expert. Absolutely. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. We'll have you back later in the week to further analyze that tape. Thank you.